Just a couple things before I uh, move into the sermon, but just please pray for Jenny. As, as you can see, she's not up here today. Uh, her back is just killing her, and she was hardly able to, to sleep last night. So, so please lift her up in prayers uh, this morning, um, and, and as you think about her through the week, uh, just chronic back injuries are, are not fun. Um, so, so please uh, lift her up on that. Also, we will have a stand-up board meeting right after the service. So just a reminder for those of you that are on the board uh, this week. And also, uh, one last thing. Uh, this week is a little bit slower, so we don't have uh, any uh, uh, adult uh, midweek ministries. We will have um, some youth ministries, though. Uh, so if you have um, some youth that are um, involved in youth ministries, remember that. Now, the Gospels are an account of Jesus' life, right? We, we, we all know that. And, and the last few weeks, we've kind of looked at the account of, of Jesus uh, being uh, introduced to the world, right? Uh, there, there were birth announcements. There, there were different uh, statements on how he was going to come into the world. There, there's genealogies. There's, there's the story of this unusual, amazing conception uh, with, with, with Joseph and Mary. We also had the, the story of John the Baptist and Zechariah. And at a glimpse, we, we, we also get to see a little bit who, who visited him in the manger. Now, a few days after he was born, he was eight days old. And as law is custom, eight, eight days old babies, boys, are circumcised. So, so Joseph and Mary traveled to Jerusalem. Can, I don't know if you travel a lot after you gave birth, right? Like eight days after giving birth to, the, to this baby, they traveled to Jerusalem. Now, travel is a little bit different. You don't have the luxury of a vehicle. I, I don't know if she walked or rode the donkey or what, but it was definitely not a comfortable ride. But they went anyway because this was custom, and and this is something that they wanted to do, when, and they had to present Jesus at, at the temple, get, get him uh, uh, circumcised and, and offer a sacrifice and thanksgiving for that. Now, when they get to the temple, you can see this account in, in Luke two twenty one through 40, but they meet two different people at the temple. The first one is Simeon. Now, Simeon is, is this Jewish person who is righteous and devout. He loves God with everything that he has. And, and, and he's, the Holy Spirit was upon him. But he was promised that he would not die before he would see the Christ. And Simeon, when he saw Jesus, he took Jesus into his arms and he praised God. And he says, my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, that is an amazing line, right? My eyes have seen your salvation. He knows that this is the Christ, that he is the one that is going to, to redeem Israel, that he is going to bring everyone together and bring salvation to the world. And then he blessed them, meaning his parents. He blessed Joseph and Mary, uh, raising in them. He, he said this, he said, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too, referring to Mary. They also met another person, Anna. Now, she's a prophetess. She's also old, just like Simeon, but she basically lives at the temple. She never left. She worshiped day and night. In fact, some of the reading I said saw that she probably had a, a room adjoined to the temple so she could basically live at the temple. And she came up to them and she's like, oh, thank you, God, for this. And said, looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Right? She knew. She, she, she is prophesying here over Jesus. So we have Joseph and Mary presenting Jesus at the temple. And it's an, an absolutely amazing thing to, to see. And then what they did, they left. They went to Nazareth, knowing their job was done. And I love in verse 40 that it says, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. 
Now, it's interesting. We, we have an account of Jesus' birth. We have an account of Jesus at eight days old. And then we don't have anything again until he's 12 years old, where, where he is again at the temple. So manger, temple, and temple. So basically, his first two accounts of his life, other than the manger, are at the temple, at his father's house. Now, you can read a little bit about this in Luke 2, 41 through 52, but I think uh, the chosen did a great job of, of, of depicting the, this scene. So I want to show that video uh, right now uh, of the chosen. So check out this of Jesus. I love that account. What do you think? Can you imagine being married, though? If you're a mother or father who have been separated from your child, frantic, worried, wondering what's going to happen, what, what happened when you're going through all these worst-case scenarios, wondering if, if he's going to be all right. Can you imagine being Jesus? Twelve years old? Seems pretty calm. Not a care in the world. Not, not really uh, worried at all. I wonder how much Jesus understood at age 12. How much did he understand that, that, that he was going to have to live and, and die, right? Live this perfect life and, and die as a sacrifice. Did, did he know who he really was? Would he understand all the things that his father was, was calling him to do? And I'm not jo- talking about Joseph. I'm talking about his heavenly father. Did he understand the, the weight of his responsibility? For some reason throughout this, this story, I, I came to another story. Have you ever heard of the Lion King? Now, when I was growing up, I, I saw it and I liked it. Now, 
as far as Disney movies, it was probably one of my favorites as, as, as a kid. But I was a little bit older than the typical person watching The Lion King. You see, my brother was 10 years younger than me, and he was the peak of The Lion King. See, we had a VHS tape of The Lion King, and he would watch it over and over. The great thing is about VHS, you could stop it wherever you wanted and come back to it and watch it again. And that kid watched that VHS relentlessly. Like, he, he knew that uh, movie backwards and forwards. But the thing is, like, he could watch it all the time, leave it wherever he wanted and come back to it, you know, the next day or two days later and, and, and continue watching it. He probably watched it 50 times, maybe. He loved that movie. And as a young kid, I didn't like it. You know, I, I was probably at that time 14, 15, a little bit older for The Lion King. Uh, I enjoyed it the first time, but I didn't really like it. But there, there, there's this story, this, this plot, that, that he, he is this Simba, is this young lion cub, and, and, and he's supposed to be the eventual king. He, he, and he can't wait to be king. In fact, there's a song about it. Oh, I just can't wait, right, to be king. And, and unfortunately, he loses his father at a young age. Mufasa is, dies or is killed by, by his Uncle Scar. And, and, and Uncle Scar tell, tells Simba that it's his fault. Now, Simba at that time, even though he just sang the song, Oh, I can't wait to be king wasn't ready to be king. He wasn't expecting to lose his father so early in his life, and he, and he had to get, get away because he was scared because Scar said, you killed your father. So, so he left. He ran away. And he meets Timon and Pumbaa, and they grow up together, basically. And they live with this mentality called, what is it, Teddy? Akuna Matata. Right? It means what? No worries for the rest of your days. It's your problem for e philosophy, right? It's, it's one of those things that, that, that they have and they live by and, and, and they understand. The thing is, I'm glad that people can have no worries, but a lot of times when you have no worries, it's because you're pushing your responsibilities away. You see, this Simba even though he wasn't ready for this responsibility, he was supposed to be king. He was, he was supposed to have all these responsibility. And basically, what he did with Akuna Matata, he avoided the rest of his life and his responsibilities and, and, and these things that, that, that he was being called to do. And I wonder, I wonder if Jesus, as a 12-year-old boy, knew the responsibilities that were, he was being called to do. Now, Simba eventually does go back to the kingdom, and he, and he does fight Scar for the kingdom, and he does win. But I wonder, can you fathom being the son of God at 12 years old? Can you understand that? Because a lot of the times we think of Jesus as God, but we also forget his humanity, because he was a kid growing up with, with these huge things, responsibilities. It says in verse 46, this is chapter 2, Luke. This is the account of, of him being at the temple. It says, after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Right? Here Jesus is, is sitting, listening, and learning from, from, from these rabbis, from these teachers. He was learning from the teachers, soaking it up. But there's more to it. In verse 47, it says, everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his gifts, his, his answers. And I wonder, I wonder how much did Jesus know? Obviously, he, he was wowing these teachers, right? Amazed at his understanding and his answers. These adults were amazed at this knowledge that, that the teachers were actually learning from him as a 12-year-old boy. In 
verse 48, it says, when his parents saw him, they were astonished. His, his mother said to him, son, why have you tri- treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously away, uh, searching for you. And we've been wondering where you are. We, we, we don't know where you are. Just like any mother would, right? But here Jesus responds, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I'd be at my father's house? And I like how, how it was depicted in that video. What do you mean, Jesus? What do you mean your father's house? And, 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 and the other adult was like, Look over my shoulder, pointing to the, basically the temple. She's like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Mary wasn't ready for it, and she's known about it for 12 years. And I, I love that these are the first recorded words of Jesus. All these things pointing to, I was at my father's house. I know who I am. I know who my father is. I know, didn't you know where I'd be? Why, didn't, why wasn't that the first place you looked? Didn't you know? Why did it take you three days to find me, right? He, I don't even think he cared that it was three days. He was just doing that, what, what he was, felt like he was supposed to do, being with his father, learning from, from, from teachers and even explaining some things, his, his wisdom and understanding. Verse 50 said, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. He didn't understand. I'm, su- I'm sure it, it would be confusing. I'm sure it would be hard to understand that concept. In verse 51, it continues, then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. So here he is, the Son of God, teaching the, the, these teachers and these rabbis. And, and then his mom finds them, and then he is obedient to them, to his parents. Isn't that pretty amazing? Knowing you're the Son of God and you're obedient to, to them, to his parents. In other words, he listened to his parents. He honored them. He he submitted. He obeyed. And and I think sometimes that's the hardest thing with a kid, right? It's hard sometimes to to understand that your parents know best. And even as a son of God, he understood that he was supposed to obey them. And I love this next line, that his, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Now, this is the second time it uses this phrase, treasured all these things in her heart, right? She preserved them. She kept them in mind. She, something that she could remember back. When, when she was looking back, she could remember what was going on. And she was taking it in, too. She was also learning along the way, growing alongside Jesus. So here you have this, the, the, this, the Son of God who, who, who was growing as well. And then Mary, Mary growing along with him. In verse 52, I love that they basically repeat verse 40. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and man. Right? This is the second time it basically repeats verse 40. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. And I think sometimes we forget that Jesus grew. He was a baby. He was eight days old. He was 12 years old. And then it shoots forward to 30 years old. But in those times, he, he grew in, this, in, in stature, in, in size, in physical size. He, he grew in wisdom, in favor with God and man, all these different things. It was all these different things that he was growing along the way. But I think it, it's a lot of times that we forget that he was a kid. That, that, that he was also God, that he was 100% God, 100% human, that he was truly human, that he was truly divine. Sometimes, though, I think we forget about his humanity. And he grew in the same way that many of us have grown, in size and stature. It, it, grow, growing, you become uh, taller and, and more muscular. You he, he had to crawl before he walked, right? Like all these different things. He, he breastfed 
eating baby food or, or eventually uh, leading up to meat. He didn't start out with meat. Maybe he played sports. Maybe he had friends along the way. He grew in wisdom. He attended rabbi school. He, he memorized scripture. He learned along the way. He also taught along the way. He grew in favor with God. Man, grace of God was upon him. And God smiled on him and he blessed him. Jesus was 30 when he was baptized. And we see this progression in the life of Jesus. And if Jesus grew in these ways, shouldn't we grow in these same ways? These same ways, these similar ways. Now, it is the end of 2023, right? Today is the last day of 2023, and tomorrow is a new day. A lot of times when we get to the end of the year, we reflect on the year past, and and we look at uh, what has happened, how we have grown, how how we have changed along the ways. So I, I ask that question to you today. How have you grown in 2023? When I look at myself, I, I, I know I look maybe a little bit different. Have I maybe gained a little bit of weight? Was it good weight? Or, 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 or am I stronger? Or, or am I more tired? A, a, am I eating well? Am I healthy? The other day, Teddy said I had more gray hair, which I'm just thankful I have hair, right? Like, I, I, I will take gray hair any day. It blends in a little bit because I have lighter hair anyway. Personally, I'm just grateful, right? Thankful for the year that we have had. Am I growing in wisdom, right? Am I growing? Have, what have I read over the past year? What have I listened to? What, what have I watched? Well, how am I growing, right? Because everybody should be growing, right? A lot of people will come to, to, to know Jesus and think, well, I've arrived. I don't need to grow anymore. I, I know Jesus. But, but, but there's this process that God works in you, and you continue to grow until the day you die, I hope. And, and, and we should be continuing uh, to grow. Am I, am I making good use of my time? Am I making better and smart decisions? Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, it doesn't say renew your mind once. He, continuing renewing. Then you will be able to test and improve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And I think we need to continue to renew our mind to help us continue to know what God's will is for our lives. If we're not growing, we might fall short of actually knowing what God's will is for us. So am I growing in favor with God? Am I growing in the fruits of the Spirit? Am I growing in favor with man, right? Have I served my family well? You see, there's something about family because they know the good and, yes, the struggles, the, the, the bad as well. My family knows me more than anyone else. So I ask, do, do, do they respect me, right? Do they trust me? Do they love me? If they can't, right, should anyone else? Am I growing in, in favor with the church? Am I growing in leadership? Am, am I shepherding well? Am, am I teaching? I, I saw this meme uh, over the last couple of months. It says, don't preach to your people you don't love. If you don't love, you have nothing to say that is worth hearing. I love that. And I hope I, I, I do love you guys every day. And, and I hope that you guys feel that. I, I hope you guys do feel that. Do Am I growing in the community, in favor with the community? Am, am I impacting our neighborhood? If, if I move today, would our, our neighbors even know? Would, would, the, would they miss me? Would people at work care, right? What are you doing to grow? How are you, what are you doing, doing to, to change, to, to, to be more like Christ? How would God say you grew in the last year or five years or 20 years? Are, 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 you, are you closer to Christ now than, than, than when you began? Are you growing in the right decision and maybe uh, the fruits of the Spirit or the Beatitudes or, 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 or more Christ-like? Are you living more in freedom? Are, 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 do you feel more, more delivered from sin? Is it easier to say no to temptation? 
What do I look like right now it, as opposed to a year ago? Well, what do I want to look like a year from now? Where, where do I want to grow? How, how do I want, want to change or transform over the next year? Where, where do I want to be? I think those are the questions that you can grow uh, just by circumstance or you can grow intentionally. So how are you going to grow intentionally over the next year? What are the books that are you going to read? What, what, what are you going to do uh, in, in Scripture? Are you going to you read a, a, da- a daily plan and read through the Bible in the next year? Because it's a perfect time to start tomorrow. Read, read through the Bible in, in a year. Are, are, what, what is your prayer life like? What, what does it look like? Are, are you closer to God today than you were a year ago? And, 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 how, and how do you grow, grow closer to God over, over the next year? It's, there, there's intentional steps that, that will help you uh, do that. I'm going to ask the worship team to, to, to come forward. We're going to have a closing song. As they do, let us pray. Lord, we want to grow. May we never be content on where we are at. May we learn and grow to be more like you. May we hear from you. Maybe we, we sometimes we, we, we just don't necessarily hear from you. Maybe that, that could be a thing. But we want to listen for your voice. And that's by being in your word. Prayer. Lord, you are so good. We want to be more like you. So let's ask ourselves, how can we grow? How can we change? How can we be more like you? We pray this in your name. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.